I'm Katie Lawson. I'm the Chief Communication Officer for the University of Maryland. Thank you all for joining us on this very proud day. Um, we are here to announce and welcome our new Athletic Director to the University of Maryland. Uh, today's program will include four speakers. It will include the President, the Chair of the Search Committee, who is also our Dean of the Clark School of Engineering, um, our very winning uh, field hockey coach who boasts eight national titles and was also a member of the Search Committee, and our candidate who will then take questions from the media. Uh, we will have a brief photo opportunity. And so without further ado, I would like, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage the President of the University of Maryland, Wallace D. Lowe. Thank you so much, Katie, and welcome to the Hotel of the University of Maryland. And since this is a welcome and an introduction of our next athletic director to the world, I need to begin by introducing his better half, his wife Carrie, and his daughter Kennedy, and in absentia, his son uh, Cameron. Would you please stand up and be recognized? I told Cam Cameron, um, no, I'm sorry, I, I told Kennedy, she's a senior in high school, that the only reason her husband agreed to take this job is because uh, Damon wants his daughter to be a Turk together with his <laughs> son. And I hope you apply and come to the University of Maryland. <laughs> this is a very special day when we introduce our new athletic director. I am confident that we have found the right person for the right time to lead Maryland Athletics. You know, the best indicator of how someone will perform on a job is how that person has performed in a similar job in the past. Damon was an outstanding athletic director at the University of Georgia. I am very confident that he will be an outstanding athletic director for the University of Maryland because he has those qualities of leadership. Of, he's a visionary, he's seasoned, he's strategic, and he has those qualities of personal qualities of integrity and compassion. Uh, now that I mentioned compassion, this announcement is perhaps a little bit more somber more quiet than we would otherwise do because we are all still grieving for Jordan McNair who, as you know, tragically passed away at the age of only 19, known as a gentle giant and we will forever remember him wearing number 79. We are all still grieving. This is a very happy day, but at the same time, all of us are mourning for him, for his family and his friends. And I mentioned that because that's when I saw that quality in Damon, and also in our head football coach, DJ Durkin days and nights at Shell Trauma, consoling the players, talking to the doctors and to the parents. Those are important qualities in any leader. But as I think about Davis's career, the other thing that I find very striking you know, his career, starting in 2004 as the athletic director, the youngest athletic director and the first African-American in the Southeastern Conference, to the present. It is truly a human story, a very typical human story of fall and redemption. 
from mountain top to valley bottom. And then over a number eight years of slow, painful ascent back to the top. That tells me something about his personal qualities of perseverance, of striving forward, of never giving up. And I hope that's a personal story of redemption is also telling us something about the values of the University of Maryland. We are committed to excellence and we are committed to inclusion. And I said that he is the right person at the right time. He is here at the right time because we're about to begin a one and a half billion dollar capital campaign of which athletics is an integral part. He may be very strategic, because I like to remind him, you know, and, and, and a visionary. And I like to remind him that vision without money is hallucination. <laughs> so a very major responsibility is fundraising, and he has done that superbly in his previous positions. And also because this is a time, as you all know, of potentially dramatic changes in the landscape of intercollegiate athletics. Whether intercollegiate athletics that as now exists will still remain the same in five years, nobody knows. But I can think of somebody in whom I have more confidence in leading us in a collaborative way, in a transparent way, to whatever the future may hold. Thank you very much for being here today. This is Daryl Pines, Dean of the AJ School of Engineering. You should know he's not only the best engineering dean in the country, he's the best engineering dean in the universe. <laughs> but his special claim to fame is that his son is a star defender on the Maryland soccer team. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the DC Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, alumni, media, President Lowe, my fellow committee members, and of course, more importantly, to the Evans family. Congratulations. So my name is Darrell Pines, and I'm the Favarden Professor and Dean of the A. James Clark School of Engineering, also father of Donovan, <laughs> as you already heard. Um, and you know, Damon, I can agree with Dr. Lowe Vision without money, as he used to say the same things to me, but I've covered my debt to the university, so he can't say that anymore about me. Um, so, you know, but he doesn't mean it, by the way. Um, I want to first recognize uh, my fellow members of the search committee who worked diligently over the past six weeks, painstakingly, confidentially, to review applicants for this very important job for the future of the University of Maryland's athletics. I want to name them individually. First and foremost, my colleagues include Mr. Mark Butler, Ms. Cheryl Harrison, Dr. Nicholas Hatley, Ms. Michelle Eastman, our outstanding coaches, Missy Mahar, Andrew Volman, Volman, and the incomparable, one of the most committed Terps, Mr. Barry Gossett Jr. Please give them a round of applause. For You might wonder what a Dean of Engineering School and an Athletic Director have in common. But the truth is that the intersection of academics and athletics is so integral to success of our student-athletes. In addition, as Dr. Lowe mentioned, I'm a parent 
of a Curtin student athlete. Yes, my son, his name is Donovan Pines, and he is an all Big Ten center back defender for Coach Sasha Sarovsky's soccer team. And he's a rising junior in biology who aspires to play one day in the English Premier League, but also in his off time study marine biology and be a marine biologist you know, during the off season. So I guess you can say that I have a first hand knowledge of the student athlete experience through my own son, and therefore I know what is required of the next athletic director. So let me say that the search committee, in partnership with our search firm, Turnkey, cast a wide net to consider a diverse pool of candidates for this important position. Our process was exhaustive and was very confidential, as we interviewed a number of outstanding candidates from around the country to help provide input to President Flo's very important decision to, the, to select the next 80 for Maryland. I have to say, from the beginning of our process, it was clear that Mr. Damon Evans was committed to our student athletes in their work both on and off the field. And he has done a tremendous job in strengthening the relationship between the athletic department and the various academic units on our wonderful campus. Under his leadership, University of Maryland student athletes have had 151 all Big Ten academic honorees. And nine programs earned a perfect year academic progress rate report while the football team turned in the best score it has ever had since 2003. As a dean, I feel lucky for the opportunity that I will have to work with an athletic director so committed to our student athletes and to creating talented, well-rounded students who are poised for success during their time here, both on and off the field, and after their time here in their future careers. A hearty congratulations to you, Mr. Evans, and to your family, your lovely family, and on being named the next director, athletic director for Maryland. I look forward to working with you closely, making sure you're going to be successful and our coaches are going to be successful. So at this time, I'd like to thank everyone, but introduce our next speaker, the incomparable coach Missy Maharg, eight-time national championship coach in field hockey, and who I'd like to refer to as the Dean of Coaches. <laughs> significant day um, could be what one might think would be just a wicked exciting day um, but actually it's just significant uh, the people behind me are great friends and the greatest head coaches collaborative that I've ever worked with it was a long process for us as the family as the kids I'm up here because I'm the oldest kid uh, that's certainly um, an honor Dr. Lowe, on behalf of these amazing coaches and myself, I want to thank you for naming Damon Evans. To Daryl, uh, what a game plan. Um, when I first met you and on the Cal Berkeley, MIT, etc., I was like, oh, this could be interesting. Um, does he know our world? It's a pretty interesting world. Um, and Andrew and I could really enjoy a, a night out. If we could get that sponsored so we could have a night out. Uh, talk about the whole process. Uh, I really learned so much, and I thank you for staying on task. I learned what the word confidentiality actually meant. So in one second, I was taking notes. He says we don't take notes. So I go, <laughs> but it's real. It is real. And these guys were so interested the whole time, etc. I just decided not to come to work. <laughs> oh, so that wasn't that hard. Research. I learned how to research. I spent over 40 hours either in session or Googling this and making sure I knew everything and then I was able to contribute. And I know Andrew the same. We talked to each other a fair amount just about doing the right homework and making sure that we're in a super good place. I actually found myself researching what a front porch was and uh, <laughs> what a sleeping giant is. And, uh, but what I was remarkable was the reality of our legacy and our history of athletic directors and leaders. I was fortunate enough to be hired by Lou Perkins, the businessman, 
Many of us worked with Andy Geiger, quite an educator. We worked with Debbie Al, the master. And we worked with Kevin Anderson, the integrator. And amazing people in those areas. And Damon, you have it all. You have a bit of every one of those great leaders. We're in good hands. Andrew and I were asked by someone else on the committee in an off session, well, tell me about Damon. <clears throat> so we're like, well, it's really easy. We're, he's really confident. And when we're confident in what we do, it's easy to be great. Um, he knows the business. He absolutely knows the business. We had head coaches meetings, and, and we have for, for years. And uh, since January, I think we've had four or five with Damon. And, after every one, I had lots of notes because I was learning things. And I'd go back to my staff and I'd share it. And the staff and I would, would talk. And um, we're talking the business. I'm, I'm talking about DJ's world and Mark's world and Brenda's world and, and Andrew's world and Sasha's world. I know we all have opportunity with pros and the big time. But we were really talking the stuff, the stuff that matters. The stuff like, you know, pay to play and concussions and student athlete conduct and we had legal come in and we had uh, housing people come in and, and how do we collaborate. It was amazing how much we've learned and how exciting it is to be one team. I, I don't want you to jump, Mark. Um, the more we all know about what each other actually do, uh, the more we will all be in position to be number one. So he's confident because he's good. He communicates. He gets respect because he earns it. He gives it. He respects all of us. I had several opportunities to talk to him one-on-one -on -one and in small groups about things that really matter. Okay. In one case, I didn't hear what I want to hear. But it's fine because he gives you the reality. He understands money. He understands vision. He gave us a small snippet in the end of year all staff meeting of what it's going to look like for us. And that's where I say it's exciting because we've just seen a very and heard a very small part. He's compassionate to the nth degree, and Dr. Lowe used that word as well. He sees no color, he sees no gender. Um, in our all staff meeting, we're honoring the likes of Debbie Russell here for 40 years as well as people in the department who are earning degrees and um, just doing major things. For us, there's only one goal for us, and that's being number one in whatever we do. It's a tough world. That's a tough way to live, and we'll do anything to represent this institution well and to do that. Today's a significant day in Maryland athletics. So on behalf of our 500, sure, 20, 30, students and our 250 employees and to the greatest head coaches in the country, I'd like to introduce our next director of athletics, Damon Evans. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Wow, what an introduction. Um, I think you guys can see all the talent uh, that we have on our coaching staff. Uh, to have the opportunity to work with so many wonderful people, uh, it's just, it thrills me and excites me. Um, first and foremost, I want to echo something that Dr. Lowe said. Um, it has been a trying time. The past couple of weeks, when you deal with something uh, as significant as a student athlete passing away, it's something that you just never imagined or expect to happen at your institution. And it really makes you understand what we are here for. We lost a member of our family. 
A young man who, just with his smile, warmed up a room. A young man who loved Chipotle Thursday, <coughs> which his roommate is going to continue. But at his services, we got to see what he was really about by the people who filled the room, the people who showed up as a representation of his life. So let us not forget Jordan McNair, because he will forever be a part of who we are. I am thrilled and excited to be standing before you. As I sat there and I heard everyone say anything, everything I was, I was thinking, I said, is that me? <laughs> Do they have the right person? But I am so grateful. And, and I want to thank, first and foremost, Dr. Wallace Sloan. Talk about someone that I truly, truly admire. A gentleman from probably the first week I was here invited me into his office and had a 45 minute conversation with a guy he didn't even know. Our relationship has blossomed. I like to consider him as a mentor, a great leader, and more importantly, a friend. Dr. Lowe, I thank you for believing me, and I thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. <laughs> to the committee, you guys did a heck of a job. <laughs> you were marvelous in what you did. And I know all of you. I, I, I've sat in with you. Uh, it's funny, I've never been so nervous before you until I came in that room. Um, but I enjoyed it. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate the work that you put in. I appreciate your due diligence. And most importantly, I appreciate you selecting me. So thank you very, very, very much. And my wife, Carrie. Many of you have not met Carrie. Uh, maybe she's kind of been a, a ghost because we've been living apart in order to allow our son and daughter to finish high school. We made that commitment because we've moved around a lot. And I want to thank her uh, for sticking with me. Carrie is the one that told me to go to the University of Maryland. Because I told her, I said, Care, I got a call about this job up in Maryland, but I'm going to call them back tomorrow and say no. She said, why? I said, because we said we never move our kids again. And she said to me, it's time for you to get back in. We'll make it work out. And I want to thank you for that. And to my daughter, Kennedy, who I told Cheryl I wish she would stay a little girl. And Cheryl said, she's not a little girl. And I said, she's always my little girl. <laughs> I appreciate you. I love you. Uh, you know, you are who we are. And we're glad you're here. And I do want you to be a turtle. <laughs> so we've got to work on that. And my son, who's not here, and some of you have met him, uh, I'm grateful for him uh, as well. I can thank a lot of people. And, the list goes on and on and on, and um, this is uh, not just about me, it's about the group of us uh, doing this here together. And uh, I will talk a little bit more about that as, as we move forward. But I would be remiss if I didn't thank Kevin Anderson. Kevin gave me this opportunity. Kevin called and took a chance on me. And I am forever grateful and appreciative to him and his family. To let you know, you guys, I'm simply thrilled and excited to be your athletic director, to work with you at such a prestigious institution, one that's become so dear to me and so dear to my heart. And a lot of people say, why do you like Maryland so much? What is it about Maryland? This is what it's about. It's the people that make us who we are. It's the community that we reside in. It's the collaborative effort across campus. It's really about doing what's in the best interest of our student athletes. Student athletes are the backbone of what we do. And the fact that I get to work on a campus that truly, truly understands what it means to integrate academics into athletics is truly, truly exceptional. When you take an institution that has the academic prowess that we have, and we combine it with the athletic prowess. And when those two intersect, amazing, 
amazing things can happen. I want all of you to know, I am going to work hard to put us at the forefront. I want people to know who we are and what Maryland is about, not just athletically, but academically. And we are going to take over this conference and we're going to do some things that other people might say, how in the heck did they do that? We did it because we worked together. And I'll make sure of that. My journey has been long. Dr. Lowe mentioned it. You know, it's interesting when you go through things in life that are difficult for you, but most importantly, difficult for your family, the people who count on you so much. But what you have to do is you have to get back up, and you have to learn, and you have to grow. A journey is about growth, and I've heard it said that a journey is never ending. There will always be growth, there will always be improvement, adversity, but you just have to take it all in and do what's right. And that's continue to grow and continue to live in the moment. I'm not through growing, I'm not through learning, I'm not through changing. I want to take all that I've learned over my career and in my life and apply that to this great institution. I am committed to doing that. This is where I want to be. I think it's appropriate uh, before I end by sharing with you a little bit about what are some of the strategic priorities that we will have. Now, these are not all encompassing, but it'll just kind of give you a little bit about where we might be headed. First and foremost, student athlete development and academics will always be our number one priority. I am a former student athlete. Having the opportunity to participate in college athletics is an avenue to a degree. And that degree is a key to open up the door to opportunity. I want to make sure that we provide the young men and young women who play for us that key so they can go out and be successful in any endeavor they so choose. The other is our staff. We can't do it without being together. Stability and continuity is something we have got to focus on. Maryland it has to be a destination location. We want people looking at Maryland and saying they have the recipe. We want people looking at Maryland and saying they have the best staff in the country. What in the heck is going on over there? I want our staff to know that I am committed to helping you grow professionally and doing the things that will allow you to meet your goals. Fundraising is significant. It presents an outstanding opportunity. Uh, Dr. Lowe just mentioned our Fearless Ideas campaign. Couldn't be more excited. But fundraising is not just about the dollars you generate, but I know we need that money. <laughs> but it's about the relationships you build. It's about the branding. It's about the perception of the institution as a whole. We will get out and we will grow this space. That's what we're supposed to do. And I look forward to working with Cheryl and our executive staff and all of our staff because we all have to take a part in fundraising for this institution. I don't know if we'll ever get that gift that Daryl got, but we're going to try. <laughs> and then finally, what I would say, let's not sugarcoat it. We want to win. We want to compete at the highest level. Because when we win, people will follow us. And we've had great success in our sport programs. But we've got to take it to another level. But it's also incumbent upon me and the staff to provide the necessary resources for our coaches to do so. And I'm committed to doing that. Excellence in everything that we do. To the staff, I'm going to end with you guys and simply say this. Thank you. You supported me. You never gave up. You never doubted me. And for that, I will forever be grateful. I can name you all off one by one and say a little special something about you. 
That's what you're going to do. I said something in our last staff meeting. We're comprised of so many different teams, of so many different people. 500 and some student athletes, 20 sports teams, I think 17 or so coaches. But the one thing that stands out to me is one Maryland. Because you know what? The sum of the whole is greater than the parts. And I promise you this, as we continue to work together and follow that one Maryland, we will do some incredibly special things. So with that said, I thank you. I am honored to serve in this role. I'm extremely humble. Thank you and go Terps. take questions from the media. Oh, as you can see, we have a full house here today, so in the interest of time, if we do not get to your question, Damon has graciously offered to stick around and do a little media gavel afterwards if we don't get to every question. That being said, we do have time for several. We ask that you raise your hand, uh, give your name and your affiliation with your outlet, um, and with that, we will take first question. Don? David, Don Marcus from the Baltimore Sun. Um, in, in terms of this job, compared to when you went to Georgia, how much more challenging is going into Maryland right now than it was when you went to Georgia, and how much more confident are you that you can do what you plan to do here? Thanks, Donna. It's interesting. Each job, when you, when you look at it, we, we operate in the same world, but in, in different communities, different environments, di different uh, conferences. As far as my, myself, I've learned a lot. As I mentioned, the, the, the journey. Where I was at 34 years of age compared to where I am now at 48, uh, I believe I have more knowledge, a better understanding about our world, uh, and not just focusing on the task at hand, but knowing that the relationship piece of it and understanding everything that goes into being an athletics director, whether that's getting involved in uh, campus issues, uh, community issues, and whatnot. I think I just see the picture better, darling. That, that's just from lessons that I learned both personally uh, uh, and professionally. From the standpoint of the difference in, in Maryland and Georgia, Two very powerful institutions, two very highly regarded institutions from an academic perspective. One institution at the time, uh, financial situation was much different. Georgia was a much different financial situation than the financial situation here at the University of Maryland. Uh, one of the reasons we joined the Big Ten, because of the many reasons, was the financial side of it. That's going to be something that we have to focus on here, is making sure that we can build the budgets in a way that we can provide the necessary resources. So I, the biggest challenge there right now for us, I think, is the financial piece of it. Uh, we're building some great facilities. We've got our coaches are, are just as good, if not better. Uh, I think the opportunities here for us are just simply uh, endless, and I couldn't be more excited. Just a from the Washington Post. Tim, how, how much do you think your familiarity with the staff and the search committee played a role in your hiring, and how much, how much were you pitching that when discussing why you may be a good fit for this job, that you've been here, you've served in some role, and also sort of know what's going on, maybe some of the challenges that you're facing moving forward? I, I think familiarity with the staff is significant. Um, I've always believed that you've got to develop those relationships, and you have to have an understanding of their needs, but they also have to have an understanding of what your expectations are. It's, it's a two-way street. Uh, I don't have all the answers, and I'll never pretend to have all the answers in moving, moving forward. But I know the strength of our organization, simply put, are the people in the organization. So I was focused on that, not from the standpoint to get a job, but that's the right thing to do, to make sure that I understand them. And then, if they know me, and I've always said that, you got to get to know a person to really understand who they are. And when you do that and you build those relationships, 
that will speak for itself. And I think I, I do think that helped me out, and uh, I'm happy that I do have those relationships. Yeah, uh, Bruce Posner from uh, Red Turtle Productions. Damon, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Damon, over the past year, give us your impressions, because it's rare that you almost have like a tryout period, but it's about what it was, uh, of you know the fan base, the strengths, the weaknesses. What are some things that come to your mind right away that you want to deal with? The tryout period, I looked at it as a great opportunity. Um, when you're handed the reins, first and foremost, I was uh, excited. Uh, I really, I told Dr. Lowe, I said, thanks for entrusting this department in me. So, but then you just got to move forward. Uh, I take a look at our programs, and, and when you look at what makes us great, look at women's basketball and what Brenda Fries has done here. Look at what Mark Turgeon has done. Look at the recruiting classes that DJ has brought in. These things got me excited. Missy Mahar, Kathy Reese, John Tillman, just to name the few, Andrew Valman, and so that got me uh, excited. So what do I see for us? I see our staff saying, what do we need to do for our coaches? What do we need to do for our student athletes? We gotta continue to look at facilities. Facilities are gonna be significant for us as we move this program forward. We all know there's an arms race in intercollegiate athletics. Cole Field House is a facility like none other. The fact that we're going to be blending academics and athletics together and dealing with concussion protocols and uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, that kind of simply sums us up in what we're about. The thing that really excited me, one of the many things that excited me was the fact that uh, the collaboration across campus and working with some dear friends like Michelle Eastman and, and Dean Pine. So as I took on this journey, as we took on this journey. It was about how do we best position ourselves to continue to move forward and grow. And that's identifying new streams of revenue, getting out there fundraising, making sure we do things for our student athletes beyond graduation with the uh, Barry, Go Barry and Mary Gossett Center for Academic and Personal Excellence. Those things get me excited and we'll continue to build upon that. Wayne Viner, Red Turtle Productions. What does your background as a big time college football player lend to you as an athletic director and how does that give you an edge in doing your job? Well, thank you for calling me a big time football player. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever called me that. I, I played a position they no longer have and that's slow wide receiver, so <laughs> DJ wouldn't send me on any uh, deep routes. But I think it gives me an understanding of what the young men and young women that we have go through each and every day. I always tell our recruits when I meet with recruits, I say, don't you hate it when someone tries to tell you how it is and they've never done it? <laughs> I can sit there and tell them that I've done it and I understand it and what they're going through, but I also think I can glean some insights into what our coaches are trying to accomplish. Uh, that's what got me into this business. I, I told Dr. Lowe and some others in the search committee I wanted to work on Wall Street. I was a finance major, but as I was playing and I saw some of the things going on, I said I wanted to jump in there. I wanted to work at a level in which I could impact change for young men and young women and help them grow and develop like people help me grow and develop. And athletics was just uh, a vehicle for me. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to play the pros. I wish I would have. My wife says no, but, uh, <laughs> but it, 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 it turned out better for me because I'm standing here before you today. I mean, you talk about the financial picture. Um, Maryland, the athletic department inherited a, 20, a $19 million uh, added cost on the Coalfield House project. How do you plan on raising money for that? Do you plan on going outside uh, in terms of any kind of uh, floating bonds or anything like that to, to, to raise that money? Uh, Coalfield House, which I'm going to continue to brag on, the best facility in the country when it is done. Uh, it is, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Anytime you, you're building facilities, it, there are chances that you're going to have overruns and you deal with those. We have a plan in place. We will continue to fundraise and uh, you guys are going to get tired of hearing me say fundraise, but 
that's that there's no ceiling there is no limit for us and so we're going to bolster our efforts in the fundraising uh, department to do those things and then we've got to become a little bit more strategic in some of our business deals uh, whether it's uh, striking a multimedia rights deal or naming rights opportunities or revamping some of our existing contracts and getting better deals in place which would uh, drive more revenue for us and the other thing too i always say this Revenue is key when you're dealing um, with expenses, but the, the expense side of the equation, we, we've got to make sure that we're fiscally responsible and we're managing our expenses in a way and that we create more efficiencies throughout the department where we save money that we can apply to things. We're going to be looking at re reallocation of funds and various sources of revenue as well.